The example that we're going to look at comes from the Whitlock and Shooter statistics textbook. It involves an iris flower and the relationship between the floral tube of that flower and the amount of pollen grains that are deposited on the stigma of the flower. In a flower like this, the bee that is doing the pollination has to crawl down into the floral tube in order to reach the nectar reward that's in the bottom. As it reaches the nectar reward, it gets dusted on the back with pollen. And then it flies to another flower where it crawls in and that pollen that stuck to the hairs on its back get deposited on the stigma of the, of the other flower. It would make sense then that a longer floral tube might cause the bee to have to work harder to wiggle around more to get down deeper into the flower where the nectar reward is. And if that were the case, then it might deposit more pollen on the stigma. In this case, the independent variable is the length of the floral tube. And what we believe is that the difference in the length of the floral tube might have an effect on the number of pollen grains that are received by the flower. In this case, regression as a statistical test would be the correct thing to do because we believe that the length of the floral tube is the cause of the effect of the number of pollen grains being received on the stigma. It would not make sense for the relationship to be the other way around. Putting more pollen on the stigma is not going to make the floral tube longer. So cause and effect does seem to be going on here and a regression would therefore be appropriate. One final comment that we should keep in mind is that the pollen grains are counts. And so when we are looking at how to deal with the data, we have to take that into consideration. We can start by reading the data from the Whitlock and Schluter website. We can examine the data and see that we have the length of the floral tube in millimeters, and then we have a count of the number of pollen grains that are deposited. When we plot the data, it looks like this. We do see that when the pollen tube is short, there aren't very many grains of pollen. And as the pollen tube gets longer, there generally seems to be more pollen deposited. Let's go ahead and run the linear model and draw the best fit line. We see that the best fit line does slope upward. So it looks like there is some kind of a relationship between the length of the floral tube, where a longer floral tube results in more pollen grains deposited. We need, however, to figure out whether the data that we have are suitable for meeting the requirements of a regression. So let's take a look at what those requirements are.